Praise the Lord, everybody. We are, I'm Pastor Angie Jackson, and we are coming at you live today from New Beginnings Christian Center. Hallelujah, where the Lord God Almighty reigns. For this is a day that the Lord has made. He said, and I will be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. I want you to join us today wherever you're logging in from whether it be from San Antonio, whether it be right here from New Braunfels or Seguin, wherever you're joining us here today, I want you to just position your heart and position your mind to receive because God has a word for you today. The Bible says this, in the book of Isaiah says that God gives strength to the weary and He increases the power of the weak. In the, in the last couple of weeks, we have been kind of in a series. <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago, we started out with the strategies of breakthrough. Then last week, we learned about what it takes for the steps of breakthrough. And today, we're going to be talking about the strength for the breakthrough. I know that I might be talking to some people right now that maybe feel overwhelmed, you might feel depleted, you might feel tired, you might be feeling weary. But I've got some good news for you today that God is going to begin to empower you for the strength that you need for the breakthrough. get everything that God has, but I have to tell you today that today there's going to be an impartation of divine strength and anointing coming to you right where you're at, wherever you're logging in from, whether you're watching us from your living room, whether you're watching us from your car, wherever you're at today, God wants to meet you right where you're at. Amen. We're about to go deeper right now in the presence of God. So why don't you join us in song? Join us with your hands uplifted. Make some room in your living room for the power and the glory of God to deposit and settle right down where you're at. Amen. Come on and go with us. Come on and rejoice. Let's worship together. Let's go deeper in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See the works of your hands, the galaxy spinning a heavenly dance. Oh God, all that you are is so overwhelming. Now I hear the sound of your voice. All at once it's a gentle and thundering noise, oh God. And all that you are is so overwhelming. I delight myself in you, in the glory of your presence. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed by you. Forgiven and free, forever you'll be my God. And all that you've done is so overwhelming. I delight myself in you, in the glory of your presence. I'm overwhelmed.
surrounding me. Let it break at your name, at your name. Still, call the sea to still, the rage in me to still. Every wave at your name, at your name. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Dame tu te paz, tormenta se serán al oír tu llamar en paz. En la adversidad, las almas calmarán. Poder lo hará Cristo, Cristo, la oscuridad semblante, Cristo, Cristo, no temeré, Cristo, Cristo, la oscuridad semblante, Cristo, Cristo. bones to live, call these lungs to sing, once again I will pray, I will pray. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear, you silence fear, Jesus, Jesus, you alone, you make Darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. We put the darkness on notice. Say, Jesus, Jesus. You say you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear. You silence fear. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus. Jesus, your name is a light that the shadows can deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive, forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. darkness tremble, Jesus, 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 you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. somebody declare he silences you fear, silence you fear. silence fear, oh, Jesus, you make, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, and your name is the light that the shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome your name is alive and it's forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome The shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive, forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. 
Jesus, Jesus, you shot it through. You shot it through. Jesus, 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 you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, oh, you make the darkness tremble. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Resurrection. bones to live and call these lungs to sing once again I will praise I will praise say breathe breathe call these bones to live and call these lungs to sing once again I will praise I will praise I will praise once again I will praise you once again once again I will Oh, don't the kill me out yet Cause the morning is coming Yes, the morning is coming Oh, oh Jesus, thank you, Jesus Your name is the light That the shadows can't deny Your name cannot be overcome your name is alive forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome somebody declare that his name is the light that the shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you shine it, you shine it Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, oh, bring, call these bones to live. All these lungs to sing once again I will I will I will I will praise oh I will I will yes I will praise yes I will Anytime soon, 
in resurrection power hey. it runs in my veins too i believe there's another miracle here in this room this is the sound of dry bones rattling this is the praise this is the praise make a dead man walk again say open the grave i'm coming out i'm gonna live gonna live again this is this is the sound of dry bones rattling this is the sound Can you hear the rattle? I hear it in the spirit. Oh, listen, listen. Because my God is able to save and restore and deliver and heal anything that he wants to. Just as the man who was thrown on the bone if there's anything that he can do hey. just as the stone that was rolled off the tomb in the garden what happens when god says to move i feel him moving it now i feel him doing it now i feel him doing it now yes he can do it now. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Woo! This is the praise. This is the praise. Make a dead man walk again. Open the grave. I'm coming out. I'm going to live. Open the grave. Open the grave. I'm coming out. I'm going to live. Don't count me out yet. Open the grave. I'm coming out. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Can you hear it? Can you hear it in the spirit? Rattle. Can you hear something shaking? Something shaking. Can you hear it? Ooh, something's moving. In the spirit. Something shaking. Something's moving. Something shaking. Can you hear it? In the spirit. Something's moving. Something's shaking. Can you hear it? In the spirit. Something's moving. You want to declare. Something's shaking. Can you hear it? In the spirit. Something's moving. Something's shaking. Can you hear it? In the spirit. Something's moving. Something shaking. Can you hear it in the spirit? He said, Live, 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 live. Dry bones hear the word of the Lord. He says, Live, 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 live. Dry bones hear the word of the Lord. He said, Live, 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 live. Dry bones hear the word of the Lord. He says, Live, 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 live. Dry bones hear the word of the Lord. He says, Love, 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 love. Dry bones hear the word of the Lord. He says, Love, 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 love. This is the sound. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise. This is the praise. Make a dead man walk again. Open the grave. I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, the grave. I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Can you hear it? Cause my God is able restore and deliver and heal hey. anything that he wants to yeah. just
just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elisha if there's anything that he can do. Just ask the stone that was rolled at the tomb in the garden. What happens when God says to move? I feel him moving it now. I feel him doing it now. I feel him doing it now. Yes, he can do it now. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise. Lift up the praise and walk again. Open the grave. I'm coming out. I'm gonna live. You better declare. Open the grave. I'm coming out. I'm gonna live. Don't count me out yet. Open the grave. I'm coming out. I'm gonna live. Gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Dead things are coming back to life. The thing that you thought was dead, the thing that you thought it's over, I can't win. There is no more. God says it's going to live. He is the God of life. He can breathe life into it. You're not finished until God says it's finished. If it's not fixed, He's not finished. If it's still broken, he's still working in the name of Jesus. Yes. Something's moving, something's shaking. Can you hear it in the spirit? Something's moving, something's shaking. Can you hear it in the spirit? Something's moving, something's shaking. Can you hear it in the spirit? Something's moving, something's shaking. Can you hear it? In the spirit, something's moving, something's shaking. Can you hear it? In the spirit, live, live. Drop on to the word of the Lord. He says, live, 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 live. Drop on to the word of the Lord. Declare, live, 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 live. Drop on. You speak to it. He says, live. of dry bones rattling this is the praise this is the praise make a dead man walk again hey. open the grave i'm coming out i'm gonna live gonna live again open the grave i'm coming The sound of trouble rattling. Yes. God said it could live. God yes. said it can live. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Hallelujah. Can we give a God a collective praise Something wherever you're at? I'm here to Something take up a collection of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Hallelujah. We just sang about that this is the sound of dry bones rattling. And I want you to know today that God spoke to me when I was right over there. And there's somebody that's even, listen to me even right now, or that's going to this coming week on, that is going through a custody battle. Come on. You're facing a courtroom situation. And I want you to know today that God hears you. 
And when you begin to speak out in moments like these, when the anointing is rich and the anointing is tangible and you're feeling it in your home and you're feeling it in your heart, when you begin to speak out that those children are coming back, that court case is going to be settled, whatever that that, that um, dysfunction is in your home, that God is bringing it back. God is healing it. God is restoring it. God is making a way like you don't think a way can be made. Hallelujah. You need to speak it right now and say, my children are coming back. That child support is coming back. Hallelujah. That income, that job's coming back. My health is coming back. Hallelujah. Oh, be thankful unto God and bless his name. You know why we can give thanks in the middle of adversity? Because we know that when it's all said and done, we win. We know that we have the victory. Hallelujah. When you're on the Lord's side, the only outcome is victory. If you endure to the end, the Bible says, you shall be saved. That's not just talking about your salvific experience, but it's also talking to you about your trouble. That if you endure to the end, that God is going to save that situation. He's going to resalvage it. He's going to put it back together. Hallelujah. Because God is a restorer. He's a healer. He's a way maker. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that you joined us today. I'm going to be checking in in a few minutes on the comments and saying, saying a good old Texas howdy to you. I miss y'all so much. I mean to tell you, I am... My eyes are becoming sore for looking for people come through the door of our sanctuary. But I, I, I know that, that, that God is still working. And, and I just want to make a little announcement because I know that um, there's a lot of people right now that are wondering, you know, when's, when's New Beginnings going to open up their doors again? And when, when are we going to be able to come back together and uh, fellowship um, because I know that, that you want that, and we want that as well. We, we really do. Uh, but for the safety concerns of, of everyone that's involved, we, we must do this when God says to open. Amen? And, and, and then when we do it, we've got to do it in a safe and a sanitary and a disinfected and a, I don't know how we're going to do this, but socially distanced way. I mean, you try and talk to a bunch of Pentecostals about socially distanced. I, I don't know how well that's going to go, but, but we're going to try and do our best. But, but, but I just want to know, to let you know that, that we're going to be doing that um, shortly. Um, but, but we want to do it when God says to open. As of yesterday, I got the report that um, the, the COVID-19 statistics for uh, Comal County has increased significantly and maybe it has to do with uh, the river and the tubing going on all the people that are coming in from all parts of, of the United States I don't know but that means that we got to keep praying amen we, we got to keep believing God that 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 God is going to turn this around and he is he is but, uh, you know, somebody could say, well, well, Pastor Angie, you ain't got a lot of faith if you're not going to open up right now. But, yes, I got faith, but we also got common sense. And, and we're only going to go with the leading of God. You know, there was a time in Paul's ministry that, that the Holy Spirit constrained Paul from going into a specific area or a specific city or region or town. The Holy Spirit constrained him from going. Now, did that mean that Paul didn't have faith? Oh, my God, no. Look at the Bible. I mean, under Paul's ministry, great miracle signs and wonders happened. But Paul knew to listen to God. 
as to when to go, where to go, how to go. Amen. And so that's what we do as a spirit-filled church led by God. Listen to the Holy Ghost, as pastors of the, as the, of the church. We want to do it God's way. Amen. And we also want to be concerned for those that, that have a, a medical uh uh, compromise medically in their body and and uh, we know that the that the healing is happening amen but we're going to be uh, mindful of those uh, people that that are in the stages of healing amen so I just wanted to let you know that 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 it's going to happen very soon and uh, you just got to be ready that when it happens <laughs> It's like Jesus told us with the church. He said, you just got to have your lamp, your oil filled in your lamps, and burning and ready, because when Jesus comes back, you ain't got time to pack. And so when New Beginnings Christian Center opens, you ain't got to have time to pack. You just got to come. Hallelujah. Oh, we're so thankful unto God. We bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you again for joining with us. We have fun in the house of God. And we pray today that as you have tuned in and you're listening to us through the duration of this teaching, that you will be strengthened today. That's the word of the Lord that God gave to me at the beginning before we even started. He said, I want you, an apostle, to preach on strength for the breakthrough. Yes. Are you ready? Amen. I know I know every day I need a renewal yes. of strength. Amen. I don't know about you, but I can't make it every day based on my own strength. Amen. But I need the strength of God Hallelujah. to get me through the day. The Bible says that you don't know what the day is going to hold. And so whatever happens in the day, just know that I and you and everybody else need God's strength. Not like the world gives where you can get find it in a pill bottle. Because that's fake strength. Yes. But I'm talking about the strength of Almighty God that will endue you with a power from on high. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let me read a scripture to you. The Bible says, in the book of Psalm 37, it says, In the Lord shall help them and deliver them. How many know that God is a delivering God? How many know that God has mastered the art of exits? That, that actually God enjoys exits. God is a God that makes a way where there seems no way. He's a way maker. Amen. He enjoys finding strategies around the enemy when it looks like your back's up against the wall, when it looks like it's over, there's no way out, I ain't got a solution, I don't have a plan, or right, I'm pulling off ink earrings in the middle of, of preaching right now. I might as well just pull the other one off so at least I look balanced. <laughs> Hallelujah. We just flow with it. We have fun in God's house. But I tell you, my, my, my earring just exited off my, my ear. But God is a God of exits. Actually, he wrote a book about it, book of Exodus, that, that it's a story of a people who got out. So when God tells us in his word in Psalms, and the Lord shall help thee and deliver them. That God's just not going to be, he's just not going to sit in the middle of it with you, but he's going to deliver you out of it. That's a promise in his word. So I'm excited today to unfold in scripture revelation for, for you that, that you might be strengthened in the Lord. Are you ready? Amen. Get your Bibles out. Get your notepads out. Thank you, praise team. Didn't they do a wonderful so job? Man, I could listen, listen to that song about bones rattling all day. I'd wear them out if, if they'd let me. They would. <laughs> Amen. But they did a wonderful job. We're thankful 
for their service in the house of God because they don't just show up and they sound great, but it takes practice. We're thankful for that. And all, all the people that are behind the scenes that are causing this to happen, we're thankful. I do want to tell you to put your prayer request in because as you uh, continue to write in your prayer request, that we're going to pray over every one of those needs. And we don't just stop at the end of service and it's done and we turn the camera off and we all go home and do our own thing. But we continually pray for the needs that come across on live Facebook. We continually um, reach out to God on, on your behalf until the breakthrough comes. So I want to encourage you to do that. I want to encourage you, if you, they'll put up on the screen um, the giving, the ways to give. Thank you for all of you that have supported and, and uh, maybe this is not your home church and you just feel an unction of the Holy Ghost to give that the gospel might be continue to be reached throughout our community. But, but online you can give, you can text to give and I don't have the number in front of me but it's on the screen. You can do it real easy, just text to give or you can go online to our website and it'll, it'll, you can travel through a secure portal of, to give, or if you don't want to do any of those, um, you can mail it in. There's a, there's a, we got a P.O. box that you can mail your tithe and your offering unto the house of God. Amen. Don't quit your giving. Do not quit your giving. It is the link. It's an absolute link that God can get back to you. If there's no link or no channel created of giving, because see, we give first, and then God gets it back to us. Amen. If there's no channel created, then the dam uh, of receiving is blocked. So don't forget to give. Thank you for everybody that's joining us. All right. Let's go to the Word of God today. Open up your Bibles, and we're going to turn to 1 Samuel, and we're going to go into 1 Samuel chapter 30. Amen. And I would say, if you have it, say praise the Lord, but... You can comment to me, chapter 30 in 1 Samuel. Amen. They, some of us got it. And uh, all right, I'm, I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes. Who have I got going on online? Wow. My goodness. Look at all these people. Catherine Benizi, good to have you joining us today. Adriana, we love you too. We love y'all. Um, Miss Becky and... Andrea Gomez and, and Isaac, God bless y'all today for joining with us. Um, Miss Tina, God bless you for joining us. We're excited today to have you. Amen. Leanne, God bless you today. God's got a special word for all the people that are joining us. Amen. Maribel, she, Maribel says, I'm overwhelmed. There's no one like you. Love you, Lord. We love you, Maribel. Can't wait to give you a big old hug. Apostle likes to tease Maribel, but we love you. Amen. Uh, Miss Janie, you and David, praise the Lord. Good to see you this morning. And all the rest, I hope I hadn't missed anybody. Let's see, who else? Henry, we got Henry on here. Rita and Lydia, good to see you here. Your beautiful, wonderful family. I miss y'all so much. I miss your hugs. Man, I tell you, I miss your hugs. I got to have one. Miss Judy, good to see you. Chris Gomez is on here. All of God's people. April is on here. And uh, all right, here we go, Melinda. I was looking for you, Melinda. You're on here. God bless y'all. Amen. Angela says, just keep on. Just keep on keeping on. Stay connected to your spiritual pastors and they'll guide you. Stay connected. Amen. We want you to connect. Talk to us on Facebook Live. And uh, it, uh, oh, Miss Becky said Catherine is her friend. Well, well, I'm excited. I'm excited that she's joining us here today. P Apostle, you look wonderful. Thank you. you I'm glad too. you're here. I'm glad to be here. With me. I'm so glad to partner in the gospel. You are, you are my partner and you're my love. And I love you so much. I'm going to try not to start breaking up now on you. But, but we, we partner in the gospel for your sake because we love you. We love you. We want to see you succeed. And I can't stand it 
when the devil takes advantage of people. If you want to know your pastor Angie, you want to know what gets me going more than anything, I come out like a bear fighting in prayer for you and your family because I want to see you live abundantly and I don't want to see the devil take anything, nothing, not a snack out of your house, not a snack. He, he, I don't even want him to have a little piece of candy out of your stuff, nothing, no. <laughs> Amen, I'm sorry, I get, I get passionate about people, but, but if you'll go with me, and Apostle, you're going to join with me this morning because I know you've got some powerful things. I always enjoy um, hearing what you have to say as we talk about strength for your breakthrough. Amen. But go with me, 1 Samuel chapter uh, 30. And uh, can you all hear me okay? Everybody can hear me on Facebook. Okay, I'm going to keep this on. I think it's going to work well. 1 Samuel chapter 30, and I'm going to skip around just a little bit, but we're going to read... Um, a little bit too. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 through 4. Then we're going to skip, go to 6, skip to 8, skip to 10. Then we're going to skip to 17 through 19. And we're going to see what God says about strength, giving you strength for your breakthrough. And it reads like this. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag. So they invaded both pieces. And what happened is that they, Ziklag was smitten and they burned it with fire. See, that's the thing with the enemy. He's not, he's not content to just take a little bit. He wants to destroy your whole house, all of it. Amen. And it says in verse 2, And had taken the women captives that were therein, and slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away. Carried them all away. And then they went on their way. They took everything that David had, and then they left. It says verse 3, So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and they wept until they had no more power to weep. I don't know if you've ever been there. I have. And so it, it, the scripture speaks that they were in great duress. Verse 6, And da David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him, the very people that he helped, the very people that he got out of trouble, the very people that were really uh, just meandering around in life until they joined up with David, then all of a sudden they're wanting to stone David and turn against him, their leader. And it says, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters, but this is key. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And the NIV says, But David found strength in the Lord his God. And verse 8, And David inquired at the Lord, saying, I'm going to grab my handheld mic. David, okay, verse 6, And David was greatly distressed, verse 8, and David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue, y'all got me? Shall I pursue after this troop, and shall I overtake them? So here David again is asking God, what God should I do? Even though everything has been stripped from David, he still goes to God and asks God, God, what do I do? I know what I want to do. i tell you what I want to do. But God, what do you want me to do? And he answered him, God did, and he said, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. But David, in verse 10, pursued. He and 400 men and 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over. They couldn't go over the brook Besor. And this is what the NIV says, for chapter 10. 
200 of them were too exhausted to cross the valley. But David and the other 400 continued the pursuit. (laughs) David and the other 400 continued the pursuit. And verse 17, and David smote them from the twilight even until the evening of the next day. This is verse 17. And there escaped not a man of them, save 400 young men, which rode upon camels and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken away. And David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that had taken to them, for David recovered all. In the NIV in verse 19 reads like this, Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else that had been taken. David brought everything back. Hallelujah. And how many know that when God is with you in the battle, nothing will be missing Nothing will be lack. You won't be missing anything, but you'll get it all back. Amen. The Bible, Apostle, says that David and his men and all that belonged to David were, they were where they were staying at a place called Ziklag. And it says that when David and his men left that camp in Ziklag, that, that while they were gone, the Amalekites raided their camp. They took their families captive, they took their stuff, and they burned down their camp. Now, something about the Amalekites, the Amalekites were such a ruthless people yeah. that they wouldn't meet you head on, but they fought like cowards, and they would t- attack people from behind. That In other words, they were the enemies in your life that that try to bring up your past. (laughs) They're they're the enemies that, that, that they try to make you go back to what God delivered you from. That they would come up from behind. They were all about the past or the drawing into or back into the past. The Amalekites were such ruthless people. Like I said, they wouldn't beat you head on. But they would, they would form a sneak attack, apostles. They were the ones that would stab you in the back. They, they were so treacherous, these, these cowardice people. They, they wouldn't fight you face to face, but they would go after the women and the children. And they'd find the weak spot in your life. And so, in, in other words, they wouldn't kill you, but they'd kill what you love. Now, not sound like how the enemy is. Yes. They were known, that historically they were known to prey upon weary travelers who weren't equipped to fight. They preyed upon weakness. Watch this. They preyed upon someone being tired. That they, they preyed upon someone's weariness. That's where they would take full advantage, and that's how the enemy is. That's why we're talking today about strength for the breakthrough. Because the enemy wants to try to wear you down. He wants to try to capture your strength. He wants to try to make you feel overwhelmed or outnumbered. And, and, And the Bible talks about that the Amalekites were such a mortal enemy of God that God reminded Israel this in Deuteronomy 25 and 17. He said, remember... What Amalek did to you on the way as you were coming out of Egypt. How he met you on the way and attacked your rear ranks. And all the stragglers at your rear when you were tired and weary. (laughs) And he did not fear God, the Bible says. He was telling Israel, the Amalekites, not daring to take on the main host of Israel attack the tail end of the line where the slow and the weak plodded along. 
That's what God told, told Israel. He said, now remember, remember those Amalekites, how that they'd always try to, to prey upon your weakness when you're tired, when you're weary. The scripture apostle is very clear in communicating to us that we are up against an invisible enemy, an invisible adversary that makes every attempt to back us off of a breakthrough. And you do not have to be to live very long to figure out that there is a bully on the block of your life that wars after the victories that you are to have, the promises that you're to have, and the dominion that God has given to you. And you need to know that the devil in all of hell is diametrically opposed to your progress. He is aggressively attempting to get us from experiencing the abundant life and the dominion and the power of the cross that brought us out of our past. And no, the devil is not just a coincidence and it's just not bad luck or bad karma that comes upon people. And it's not the fact that I just can't get a break. And, but there is a diabolical force that opposes who we are, what we have become, yeah. and where we're going. Yeah. The Bible clearly communicates the devil's intention and tells us that the enemy comes to steal, comes to kill, and comes to destroy. In Scripture, Paul also warns us that we should be aware of how the enemy works so that we don't fall prey to the methods or the wiles or the schemes or the traps that he throws out in our lives. The world would want to mysticize or fantasize or call it make-believe or, or, or try to make it to be a ch child's fable, but he is the arch enemy of heaven and all of God's creation. He shows up in the beginning in the garden as a serpent, and he ends up in Revelation as a dragon. The Bible is clear that the enemy wants to kill and destroy, but sometimes, apostle, we gloss over the fact that he wants to steal. Now watch this. We can see the destruction that he causes. We can see the, that he cuts off life and that he cuts life, lives short of their progress. We can see his diabolical works on the outside, but sometimes, Apostle, it's harder to detect the things that he steals on the inside. It's harder to detect when your joy is gone until you wake up and you realize, I'm not happy. I, I, my joy's been taken. Or, or, or to steal and realize that he steals your drive, that he feel, steals your focus, that, that he's a stealer of your faith, your conscience. The devil wants to try to steal people's conscience their conscientiousness towards God and towards man. He wants to steal people's trust by breaking trust so they'll never trust again. The devil is out to steal your zeal. He's out to steal your heart so that you just won't put yourself out there again. Because, because what you have to understand, the devil is a thief. He tried to steal God's glory and take it for himself. He tried to steal God's throne so that he could sit on it. He stole a third of the angels out of heaven from God. And what makes him, watch this, what makes the devil so diabolical is that he is a thief without a conscience. Which means... What he steals, he will not return. That's right. Come on. 
So if he will not return it, then the only way to get it back is for it to be recovered. Some people wait for things to come back, Apostle. But once the devil steals it, he won't bring it back. Which means you got to go out and get it. You got to fight for it. You got to strive for it. You got to go out and get back your peace. You got to go get your joy. You got to go get your heart that you left to the last one. You got to go out and get your trust. You got to get your conscience. You got to get everything that the enemy takes away. Don't wait for the devil to get a conscience because he ain't bringing it back. But you will get it back when you take it back. Oh my God. Let me tell you, Israel did nothing without the Ark of the Covenant, which represented, we know, Apostle, the presence of God. They didn't do anything right. without it. And when they did, they lost. And it was a reminder to them and to us, don't do anything without God's presence. Don't go into battle without it. Don't go into a marriage without it. Don't go into a courtroom without it. Don't go into a classroom without it. Don't apply for a job without it. Don't turn in your resignation without it. When Obed-Edom had the ark of God in his house, everything that he had, God blessed it. And I'm here to tell you today, don't do anything without the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just make a comment. I, I'm not going to do anything without the presence of God. And when David realized that the presence of God, the blessing of God, was in Obed-Edom's house, it didn't matter, Apostle, how many battles that David had just fought. It, no matter how many times that he had to drive the enemy out, no matter that the previous king... Apostle didn't even care about it. Just because somebody else don't care about it doesn't mean that I don't care about it. Just because somebody else doesn't want it doesn't mean I don't want that I I want it. Just because somebody else don't want out doesn't mean I don't want out. The world that we live in, and I want to tell you this, can be so self-serving that people want to take sacrifice out of serving God. That people want to take out the sacrifice part of serving God. But they want to still have his presence. The Bible says that when David set out to bring the ark of God back to Israel, that when the ox stumbled and Yuza reached out his hand to steady the ark, that God struck Yuza dead. So when Yuza mishandled the ark, when he didn't honor the presence of God, David stopped the whole caravan. David stopped them all. They were trying to bring back God's presence, but they were doing it the wrong way. So David stopped, and the Bible says that the fear of the Lord fell upon David. And he said, the only way that we're going to get the ark back is to take seven steps, watch this, and then sacrifice. And any time that people take the sacrifice out of serving, no presence. When we only consume and not give back, no presence. And consumers, watch this, Apostle, consumers are revealed when they purposely hold back and don't show up till the word comes forth. See, consumers are revealed when, when they purposely, strategically come into service and, and they only show up when the word comes forth or the prayer line starts. And so they miss all the parts of the service that are about me giving. Giving God something and only show up to the parts that are only about me. So they miss the worship. They'll miss the praise. 
They'll miss the announcements about we need somebody's help in the church. We need this. We need that. Uh, they'll, they'll miss the giving part because the mindset is I don't want you. I just want what you have. But when your life is set apart, when the glory, when I, I'm talking to people here right now, this is you. This is who I'm fixing to start preaching to. When the glory of God comes down to your row and sets on your life, when you really have an encounter with God, when you lay it down, you don't want to pick it back up again. When the glory of God really hits your life, then burdens are lifted, yeah. habits are broken. Hearts are changed. And that is the only way, Apostle, that we're going to anchor the next generation is by getting the glory of God in this house and in our houses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because when God shows up, everything else is changed. People are changed. Unforgiveness is changed. Hearts are changed. Jobs are changed. Economy is changed when the presence of God hits our house. Hallelujah. We cannot let the adverse adversity push us into apathy where we are just sitting and waiting on the devil to bring it back. Because the battles that the enemy has been throwing at some people right now are battles that have been sent not to wage war, but to wear you out, to take your strength. Because if the enemy can wear you out with all the stuff that's not the real fight, then when the real fight comes, you won't have the strength to fight. But I'm here to decree and declare that your strength is coming back. Your fight is coming back. Your stamina is coming back. And you will have strength for the breakthrough. Hallelujah. Clap your hands, all ye people, unto the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. And Apostle, as I turn this over to you, because I know you've got some powerful things, we're talking about strength and what it takes to have the strength for the breakthrough. Tell us what you have. There are a number of points that you said that I want to go back. Mm -hmm. In Proverbs 13 and 12, yes. reading out of the message Bible. It says, unrelenting disappointment leaves your heart sick. Hmm. The King James Version says, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Yeah. That word hope means expectation. It means anticipation. Yeah. It means to look forward to something. Come on. The word deferred means what has been prolonged. Yeah. The word make there means to formulate in the mind. Yeah. So it doesn't happen overnight. That's it, Apostle. Because you look at the word formulate. Yeah. That's nothing that is on the spur of the moment, but it takes time to formulate something. Yeah, it does. It also means, the word make there means developing. So something begins to develop. There's always a starting point. Yeah. And it said the heart there means the seat of emotions. It means the mind. Right. It means the inner person. And it means the will. Mm. And this morning when I got here and began to ask the Lord to direct me, the first thing I thought about was the power of the human mind yeah. or the power of the human will. That's so true. And I wrote down here, sometimes you don't realize your own strength until you come face to face with your greatest weakness. Wow. Arnold Schwarzenegger says, strength does not come from winning. Your struggles develop your strength. Mm. When you go through hardships and decide not to surrender, that is strength. Yeah. Winston Churchill said, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. Yeah. It is the courage to continue that counts. Wow, that's so good. True that's strength so is keeping it together when everyone expects you to fall apart. Why, my, my. Anyone can give up. This is another person, an anonymous person that wrote yeah. this. Anyone can give up. It is the easiest thing in the world to do. But to hold it together when everyone else would understand if you fell apart, that's true strength. Yeah. You never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice you have. Come on now. 
Now, I settled that That's to say so this. Good. Here's the thing. There is no easy recipe for bouncing back. Come on. Wouldn't that be nice? I wish that yeah. I could look into this camera right now and tell everyone that is listening that it's very easy oh. to have a comeback. Oh, my God. But once again, there is no easy recipe of, for bouncing back. Right. The majority of the time, hear me, you will have to struggle your way out of it. Yeah. Now, many times the language in apostolic circles is you must praise your way out of it. Yeah. And that is true. Yes. But I want to get real with you. When you are in a deep struggle, it's hard to praise. What? Sure it is. And I am talking to somebody here right now. now. It's Come been on. a struggle for you to Come lift on, your hands there. and worship God. I know how that feels. Yeah. In 46 years of ministry, I have encountered many potholes. Sure. I have encountered many valleys. Oh, and not every time, I'm being real with you here, not every time that I've come into the house of God, I felt like lifting my hands sure. and worshiping sure. God. That's real. When you're going through a struggle, you don't feel like running out your front door and running down the street hollering praise the Lord right. because that praise has been depleted. Yeah. That worship has been depleted. With it. Tell us. Tell you us. will have to fight your way out out of it. Yes. It will take a gut mm -hmm. full of determination. Now in Genesis mm -hmm. 25 and 22, the scriptures tells us that there was a struggle within Rebekah. Yeah. The word struggle there in the Hebrew, it means to break, to crush, Jesus. to discourage, yeah. to oppress, to crack in pieces. Yeah. In the Message Bible, it puts it this way, this is what Rebecca was saying in the Message Bible. If this is the way it's going to be, why go on living? All right, now. That's real. That if is this real. is the way it's going to be, why go on living? Sure. It is possible with thousands that have been watching sure. every Sunday Thank that God. there's somebody there that has said the exact same thing. Go ahead, Apostle. Being emotionally punched in the gut does yeah. take the wind out of you. Yeah, it does. There are a number of ways this can happen. And Satan knows this all too oh, well. Yeah. When you're looking forward to victory, but it is prolonged. All right, now. When you hear others have broken through to victory, yeah. then discouragement begins to formulate in the center of your emotions. Yeah. Our enemy sure. will highlight others breakthrough. Come on. The yes, enemy yes. will highlight others breakthrough. Yeah, will. Now watch this. He does this to turn our attention towards God, causing us to believe God has let us down. Yeah. But here's the underlying statement. Yeah. When you feel someone hasn't come through from, from that point on, it's hard to completely trust that individual. Come on now. When somebody's let you down. If they say they are sorry, yeah. you will enter back into that relationship cautiously, right. guardedly, oh, and so carefully. Good. This is so good. Satan will use disappointment mm -hmm. to the degree that you will now live for God cautiously, yeah. guardedly, Jesus. and carefully. In other words, we won't allow ourselves to completely trust God anymore. Mm. We will find ourselves saying, I tried that. I really tried believing Him, and all I got was disappointment. Here we go. Here all we I go. got was disappointment. Here we go. He, yeah. came, he didn't come through like I thought He oh, would. Yeah. Sure. So now your relationship with God is guarded. And there is a danger in living for God cautiously because it means you won't give yourself over to God completely. You won't fully trust Him again. But this is a trick of the enemy. The Lord brought something to my mind this morning, and it was the word impossible. But when you look at that word impossible... You divide it in two, impossible now becomes impossible. 
They're saying, this is my word, Apostle Preach. Go ahead. Tell them. Impossibly be becomes I'm possible. <laughs> Paul said, what? I can do all things what? through Christ Jesus who strengthens yes, me. Jesus. Yes. Impossible means I'm possible. Yes, Lord. yes, Jesus. But now here's the thing. You gotta have persistence. Yeah. The yeah, persistence, yeah. watch this. It's our ability to persist in the face of all setbacks and temporarily failures is essential to success in life. Yeah. Napoleon Hill said, persistence is to the character of man as carbon is to steel. Mm. Persistence is the quality that is most needed when it is exhausted. Yeah. Per persistent means an obstinate, watch this, yeah. continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulties. I'll say it again. An obstinate, yeah. continuous, in a course of action in spite of difficulty. Yes. You keep on going in spite of difficulty. They're saying, come on, So apostle. I'm going back to saying this, that there's no easy recipe to get through victory. Yeah. You are going to have to fight yeah. your way out of it. Mm -hmm. You say, Apostle, how do I do that? When you are faced yeah. with an sudden difficulty yes. and it is prolonged, it can yeah. sap your victory. Mm -hmm. It will sap your encouragement. Yeah. You will find to where you won't even want to get out of bed because you are so disappointed. You're so discouraged. Yeah. But so. there was a particular time David felt the same way. Yeah. You were talking about it in the Word. That's right. We're talking about his own men when they got back to Ziglag yeah. and they realized all David those men wrong. that had suffered with him in the cave of Adullam. Yeah. All those men that came under the anointing of David, that when they saw that the enemy had taken everything that they had, their families, they started getting their heads together and wanted to stone David. And the Bible says, right here, they were exhausted with weeping. Yeah, they were. There could be people right now that we are listening to that are exhausted with weeping. Yes. And, they, and the Bible says, and suddenly... David was in even worse trouble. And I wrote down here, when trouble comes suddenly. Yeah. How many times have we woke up and all of a sudden we didn't anticipate something that comes and faces us? Right. Now we are, we are suddenly smack dab in the middle of something we didn't ask for. Yeah. Something we didn't anticipate sure. for. Sure. And so watch this. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm talking about here. Because when you get down to where you have been punched in the gut mm -hmm. and all of the wind of praise and worship has been sucked out of you and you are grabbing hold of anything that you can grab a hold of. Yeah. It's like a dying man that is drowning in the water. Yeah. They have taught people. They have taught guards. You have to be careful. When you are approaching a man that is drowning in the water because there are certain ways that you, and I've been trained in this, that you have to grab a hold of that individual or they will pull you under. It's true. Because yeah. this is what happens. When a person gets to a place to where they lose faith, to where they lose hope, then others that go into their life and need and want to try to raise them up, they themselves have to be careful. Because the enemy wants to transfer that, uh, that doubt and that yeah, disbelief it, into That's that good. person. That's good. And so that person has to understand when they go in to help somebody, yeah. when they go in to say, hey, I'm praying for you. Hey, I'm going to fast for you. And they start giving them scripture. The Bible says we got to be enemy smart. Yeah, right. We got to be wise as a serpent. Yeah. But I am talking to people now because I'm getting back to that punch in the gut. You need to just draw a line in the sand. Amen. Because as I've said before, you got to face, look at yourself in the mirror and say, if it is to be, then it is up to me. Amen. Amen. Because, beloved, there are going to be times 
Nobody's going to call you and say they're praying for you. There's going to be times that nobody is going to speak in your life. There's going to be times that, you're, that you won't be able to be in the midst of this house with the, uh, with the saints of God and that atmosphere of praise and worship. There's going to be times you're going to be out there by yourself. And you have got to, be, you have got to determine that I am not going to allow the devil to separate me yeah. from the Lord. Yeah. And you have got to just fall on your face. I know what it is to fall on my face. I mean, beating the ground with my fist, tears rolling down my face, praying, praying and begging God, God, I don't want to hurt anymore. I don't want to hurt anymore. But I also know what it is to remain there and say, devil, you're not going to take me under any yeah, further. Yeah, it stops yeah. here. Yeah. It stops Blimey. right now. Blimey. I'm talking to somebody now. Get your faith back. Woo! Get your determination yes, back. Lord. Get your courage back. Get the fire of yeah, God Dios. back within you. Determine today that before the sun settles Woo! down tonight Blimey. that I'm going to rise up. The Bible says rejoice not against me. Oh, my enemy, when I fall, I shall arise. I speak to you now. It is the moment. This is the day for you to arise, for you to arise, for you to arise. You got to get it in your gut. You got to get it down deep in your soul. I am going to arise. I am going to get this, get encouraged. I am going. The Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. There comes a time nobody else is going to encourage you. You got to understand, I must encourage myself. I must encourage myself. David said, I will remember what God did for me in the past. God can do it now. Start remembering, baby. Start remembering. Start remembering. God brought me through it back then. God will bring me through it now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you for that, Apostle. I mean, it's blowing up. The Facebook is blowing up. Come on. Hallelujah. They're saying, yes, Lord. Amen. That's right. Preach it, Apostle. You know, it's funny because, Apostle, when you're, you're talking about that, that it's going to take that effort to, to uh, get the breakthrough and that the enemy wants to try to steal your strength and and steal your, your stamina. When we go to our text, David's camp is left in ruins. Totally. And it's been raided by the enemy. Everything that David and his men loved was gone. Let's read it. And it says, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. That's what you were just talking about. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. Why did they do it? Because they were grieved. They weren't thinking straight. And that's what the enemy tries to get people into a mental calamity to where you, you start making decisions when you're, when you're weak, when, you're, when your faith is low, when you're discouraged, when you're depleted, when you're just energy deficient. He wants you to get, make life decisions. Yep. Or to draw back on God and say, well, I'm just not going to, you know, pray today. Or I'm not going to uh, go today. Or I'm not going to give it my all today. He wants to attack you, like we said at the beginning, at those points of weakness to try to, to, try to drain you from that. And it says, because the people were grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But watch this, Apostle. It's just what you were saying. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And like you were saying, Apostle, how many times have we in our life, we didn't get the phone call. We didn't get the, the he hand laid on our head. We didn't get the word from God. We didn't, we didn't get uh, uh, the encouraging card or whatever, but we had to encourage ourselves. We, we felt like we were all alone, although they, we weren't. But you still feel that way. Right. But the Bible says that David encouraged himself. 
He began to change his mind and begin to remember what all the battles that God had just brought him through. And he began to pull up those battles and say, I know that God brought me through that. I know he's going to bring us through this. I know that God didn't fail me then, and he's not going to fail me now. David began to encourage himself with all the testimonies that had happened in his life, all the other breakthroughs that he'd gotten. And I'm telling you, if you're going to get strength for this breakthrough, you got to remember all the past breakthroughs right. that God brought you out of. That is your strength. That is your praise. That's your praise break. break. That's your joy. That's your stamina. That's your zeal. That's where your fight lies, is go back to the place of your last breakthrough and get the strength strength of that breakthrough and take it in to the fight for this breakthrough hallelujah and the bible says and it talks about how that now david you have to understand something about david we know that david and god apostle had a long history together yeah. <laughs> they david knew something about his god he knew that god was going to turn this thing around and he is determined that in Till I know, here David is, and he's, he's saying, until I know what to do next, then I'm going to encourage myself with the fact that God has never let me down, that God has always come through, that God has always led me out, that God has always guided me. And although the enemy may have stolen a lot of things, David refused to give him his courage. Because if he gave the enemy his courage, that left him discouraged. And when we give the enemy our courage, then we are only left being discouraged. And if he ever got into the realm of discouragement, the enemy would keep his courage and wouldn't give it back. And I need to tell you that there are things that we don't get when we quit, Apostle. That's what you were talking about. Yes. That's what you encouraging people to do. Don't quit. The Bible collaborates this claim. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 36, in the NIV, it reads like this. You need to persevere. So that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. And let me read that again. It says, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. And that means that when you are doing God's will, that you must endure God's weight. Because there are some promises that are only received when you wait. That's what Hebrews is talking about. That's the perseverance that it's going to take to get what God has. The perseverance. Perseverance means to endure. What does the Bible say? He that endureth to the end shall be saved. That's just not talking. I think I said it earlier about your salvific experience Although it does, but it also um, takes with it everything else that needs to be saved with you. Meaning your breakthroughs shall get a breakthrough. He that endureth to the end shall get a breakthrough. Yeah. Shall get the promise. Yeah. Shall get the victory. Right. That's what perseverance is. Perseverance is, watch this. Perseverance is a character trait of faith. Perseverance is the personality of faith. If you want to know how faith acts, what, what's its personality like? You ain't got to do one of these anagrams like the young people are doing to find out what anagram faith is. You know what faith is? It's number number eight. It's new beginnings. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> On the anagram chart, faith is new beginnings. Faith is perseverance. Faith don't let go until you bless me. 
Faith endures to the end. Faith stays the course. Faith keeps on fighting. Faith keeps on praying. Faith keeps on believing. Hallelujah. Somebody got to have faith. Hallelujah. Faith. Faith is perseverance. Right here. Go ahead, Apostle. I know you've been smoking that pen as I'm talking. There's two things here. Number one, when you go into prayer, a lot of times, especially when you're facing all kinds of hell, yeah. you will go into that prayer with a heaviness. Mm -hmm. But somewhere in the midst of that prayer, there has to be a mind switch. Yeah, exactly. Because... I have preached it so many times. Whoever, whatever, controls this up here. Yeah. Controls the rest of your life. Right. And so, point two. Abraham, go back in the book of Genesis. Abraham comes along, he digs wells. Mm -hmm. Water springs up. Mm -hmm. Then he passes away. Yeah. Then the enemy comes in and refills those wells. Oh, yeah. Yes, he will. Then his son sure. Isaac comes along. Yeah. And they start digging the wells of his daddy again. Yes, yes, yes. Dig it. But now, yep. once again, the enemy comes mm -hmm. and covers up what Isaac had dug. Yep. Again. But Isaac went a little bit further and dug again. Yes. In other words, there's that persistence. Perseverance, yep. There, Larry Bird... <coughs> who is a professional basketball player, very, very good player. He said, push yourself again and again. Yeah. Don't give an inch until the final buzzer sounds. Come on. The final buzzer for the kingdom of, the kingdom of God, the final buzzer for the children of God is the rapture. Yeah. yeah. That's the final buzzer. That's right. That's when and so if the enemy comes finished. along and he tries to cover up your faith, cover up your discouragement. It goes back to what I said. There's no easy recipe for a breakthrough. You got to dig it. So you got to start digging. Yeah. You got to dig. Yes. There was a particular time that Israel was going through. The old generation was, was traveling and so they got thirsty. God said to Moses, take them back to the, to the place of beer. He yeah. said, there I want them to dig. Yeah. God provided the place. Mm -hmm. But they had to dig to get to the water. Right. God provides the place of victory. Right. God provides. The cross was right. the place that he, that he settled it all. Right. But it's up to us. We're going to have to dig for it. We're going to have to dig. Hear what I'm saying, people, that there's always going to be a continual fight until the rapture takes place. Yes. Because you're, you have to understand about the enemy. He is relentless. Right. He, he is relentless. Yeah. And you've got to be careful even after the breakthrough, Pastor, mm. they have to be careful. Mm -hmm. Because before the breakthrough, there's that push. There's that drive of fasting and praying and interceding and travailing and speaking the word. But then after the breakthrough, it's like a... Whew. Yeah, a let up. And you can't do that. Yeah. Paul said... We wrestle not against flesh and blood, yeah. but against principalities and powers, right. against spiritual wickedness in high places. Notice he didn't say we do it every once in a while. Yeah. Because here's what people need to understand also. Once they say, I want to grow in God. Mm -hmm. I want my praise to become more anointed. Yes. Then all hell is going to be unleashed because the devil is not sure. going to pack his bags and move to Florida and put up a canopy and sit back on the beaches of Florida. Mm -hmm. No, it's an all-out battle. Yeah. When you say, I want to draw closer to God, then get ready for the storm. Amen. Get ready for the storm. He said, we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. Right. But there is breakthrough. Yes, we can exactly. have breakthrough. Exactly. We can have yes. victory. Yes, we we can. can have faith. Yes. We can have it. Yes. But it, it takes fighting it through it and sticking with it right. until, until that breakthrough happens. Right. You have to start speaking it. Right. I am getting, going to break through. I'm going to break through this because impossible. Now I am possible. Yeah. I am possible. God's given me the strength 
And the Bible says that David, I hope I'm not jumping ahead of you. The Bible says David recovered all because he obeyed God and he, what did he do? He went after. You got to go after victory. Like you said a while ago, you got to go after that encouragement. You got to go after and take it with all the gusto that's within you. Let there be a fight that rises up inside of you. A I am possible with God's help. I'm going to get back everything that the enemy has stolen from me. Right, right, right. It's that it's that perseverance, apostle, that we're talking about. Like I said, perseverance is a is a character of faith. You know, without perseverance in the kingdom, then we lag behind everything that God has for us. So perseverance has to do with not just the, like I said last week, not just the strength of your faith, but it has to do with the length of your faith. So the question is today, how long can you believe when it seems like believing isn't working? Because a devil apostle will want to try to give you faith fatigue. But long faith is persistent faith. It is enduring faith. Long faith is tenacious faith. It is unrelenting faith. Endurance faith, people of God, is a kind of, like I call a headstrong faith. Enduring faith is an inflexible faith. It's unshakable faith it's the kind of perseverance faith that says if it doesn't look like the promise I'm not leaving if the door opens and it doesn't look like what I'm believing for then when that door shuts I'm going to be waiting on the next door to open until what I'm believing for comes to pass If the answer is no, I'm not leaving. If the answer is yes, I'm not leaving. If it's a mountain, I'm not leaving. If it's a valley, I'm not leaving. And it's your perseverance that will, watch this, it will stalk the promise. That's what your perseverance does. It has a stalker mentality. Then it stalks the promise. It looks for the promise. It keeps pursuing the promise. It keeps chasing down the promise. It hunts the promise down. And it doesn't take any any kind of settlement from the enemy. It doesn't take seconds. It doesn't uh, dialogue with the devil. And it doesn't reach an agreement with the devil. It's the kind of faith that is persistent enough that it has a stalker-like behavior. Because it says, whenever you look up, I'll still be there. There are some blessings, Apostle, that don't flow because people let go. Because when you let go of something that you don't see, then you will be letting go of something that you will see. The Bible says in this scripture text, in verse 4, then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power or strength to weep. Somebody help me with, I need this iPad plugged in. Get get Brandon, if you will. I need my iPad plugged in because I don't want to miss not one of these comments. I don't want to miss not one amen. I don't want to miss not one prayer request. I don't want to miss not one agreement with God's word. Hallelujah. So, y'all, we can do this. We can get a a, a cord and we can just keep going because we're flowing in the Holy Ghost right now. The temptation, watch this. I'm going to read it again so we don't get sidetracked. Then David and all the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power or strength, here we go, to weep. And the temptation 
to let go is always accompanied with being tired. You understand that? It's always accompanied with, I'm tired of believing and it don't happen. I'm tired of trying and nothing's different. I'm tired of waiting and nothing changes. Sometimes we quit because we are not seeing a return of what we are putting in. Did you hear me, what I said? Sometimes people quit because they're not seeing a return of what they are putting in. Or sometimes they quit because they're frustrated. That if the devil can get you tired, then he can get your stuff. If he can get you deflated, he can keep you defeated. Israel was not defeated, apostle, because they couldn't fight. They were defeated because they couldn't see. Because the spies, the Bible says, came back and told them that they saw giants in the land. So what they saw dictated their faith. One that Israel couldn't fight, it was that they couldn't see. They saw giants. But then you got Joshua and Caleb that said, we're more than able to take the land. I don't care if there's giants. I don't care if there's a multitude of them. I don't care if they've, they've got artillery and a battalion that reaches the millions. God said, if we go into the battle, we're going to win. Don't doubt. Don't get discouraged. Don't give your courage to the enemy. I don't care how high it looks. I don't care how big it looks. I don't care if it looks like it's coming against you and it's a flood that's coming. The Bible says the standard of the Lord will raise up against the standard of the enemy. The spirit of the Lord will do that. And what happened was they saw that there was more of them and they, than they were of us. And a lot of people expect, watch this, a lot of people expect advancement without opposition. But you need to know that to get promotion is not going to come without pressure. You don't get the promise without a fight. Instead of going into the promise, there were some that didn't want to fight, and so they decided just to settle just this side of the promise. And although the devil will give you a whole case on why you need to stop. I mean, he will, he will, he will appoint witnesses. He'll subpoena witnesses and try to present a whole case to you of, as to why you need to stop. Just because you may have a case to stop doesn't mean you are correct to stop. So before you settle, make sure that you can live with what if. Before you stop, make sure you can live with what if. What if I would have held on longer? What if I would have done more? What if it happens, but I don't take possession of it? What if I quit and somebody gets Somebody else gets what I'm believing for. What if it breaks next week, apostle? What if it comes through in two weeks? What if it's restored tomorrow? Now, if none of these scenarios you can say that I don't need what God has and I'm okay with not taking blessing and not taking the victory and not taking the back, the breakthrough, then why should God do it? If any of those, you can say, I, I'm fine with what, whatever God has, I don't need it. Then why should God do it? If it's only based, watch this, if it's only based on our timetable, then the context for change is hemmed in by the parameters that I put, let me say that again. 
if it's only based on my timetable, then the context for change is hemmed in by the parameters that I put. My timetable. My, my, what I think, how I think it should happen. When I think it should happen. And then the parameters, watch this, the parameters that I put places a bondage on my blessing. See, here's the, here's the thing. Hems it in. When Jesus came to, to Jerusalem, yeah. they expected him to come a different way than what, he, what sure. he did. Through the palace. And so there was a mindset, a yep. certain mindset. Yes. And when he came, that mindset, here, here's the deal mm -hmm. here also. Yeah. Let me add to this if I may. No, go ahead. Go ahead. We're flowing. We're flowing today. The mindset is, well, there's a, there's, I have a book that has a bunch of sayings, and it says, don't be uh, all mixed up and permanently set. Come on. Like concrete. Right. Yeah. Don't be mixed up and all permanently set. Right. Now, here's the thing. They missed it. Mm -hmm. There was they miracles take, taking, right, taking place right in front of them. Yeah. He was raising the dead. Yes. He was opening up blinded eyes. Yes. He was raising the cripples. Right. Crooked limbs was being straightened out. Right. I mean, it was an apostolic revival. Yes. But because their mindset, the religious people at that time, because their mindset was so rooted. Yeah. And this is how it has to as be. As to the way they thought yes. it was going to happen. Yes. They couldn't change. Mm. They missed it. Woo, Jesus, 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 Jesus. John testified about it before Jesus came. He said, there is one walking among you mm. whom you don't know. Right, right. And that was a, to me, every time I read that, that is a slam to that generation. Yeah. Because they were religious people. Sure. And so they were schooled in the Torah. Yeah, they knew the, the first times. five books of the Bible. Yeah, they knew the times. They knew. And in the first five books of the Bible, it talks about mm -hmm. a Messiah yeah. that is coming, mm -hmm. that is going to be born. Yeah. Even it is even said in the book of Genesis. Yeah. And here we've got to be careful. People that are watching yeah. have to be careful because God put it in his word. My ways are not your Come ways. On, yes. My thoughts are not your yes. thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. My thought, God is not going to be right. put in a box. Right, yes. And when you think that you have all the answers concerning him, he's going to come and change the questions. Yeah. Because you will never know everything is about God. Right. Because if you did, there would be no reason for you to have faith. Right. Exactly. And so I challenge our people mm -hmm. that are listening today, don't let your mindset become so permanently Please set yeah. exactly. that when God doesn't do it the way you think he's right. going to do it, that you can accept the way God wants you to have it. Right, right. It's, it, it, it's not putting parameters around or a time clock around your breakthrough. It, it's not causing your breakthrough to be in bondage. Because when you put a, a time frame around it, then you are, are hemming your breakthrough in. You're, you're pushing it in a corner to where it can't get out. And, and, and then, then what happens is when you say... But when you begin to realize that I'm going to take all the time restraints off of my breakthrough, then you say, you begin to say, I don't care how long I have to wait. I'm getting the breakthrough. Then I break the blessing. This is what happens. Then you break the blessing out of bondage, out of the bondage of your perimeters, out of the bondage of your timetable, out of the bondage of your time frame, and you break 
the blessing out. And it has freedom then to move on that heart. It has freedom to move on that boss. Then it has freedom to move on that mind. It has freedom to move, Apostle, on that body the or Bible, on that marriage. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with yes. all thine heart. Yes. And then let's finish the verse. And lean not to thine own, own understanding. understanding. Yeah. In all your ways acknowledge him. Yes. It all goes back to him. Yes. Trusting him. Looking to him. Yes. Believing on him. Yeah, yeah, depending yeah. on him. Yeah, yeah. If David, Apostle, would have said that I don't have the strength to fight anymore in this passage. It, it, because that's where they get, got to. Yes. I mean, you don't think that David was overwhelmed when the Bible says that they, they wept so much that they had no power to weep anymore. I mean, these are, these are men of brawn, okay? The, these are men that could fight. They fought so hard that the, the sword would cleave to their hand. They, right. they weren't afraid of fighting the enemy. Right. But when the enemy took what they loved, then, then he also took their faith and he took their courage and they, they were weakened to the point to that they, they didn't want to fight. Right. But if David would have said, I don't have to have enough strength to fight anymore. I don't have enough energy to go and get my stuff then he would have settled for doing without it. He would have settled for what God meant for him to take. He would have just settled for it. In other words, it's settling for salvation without transformation. Yep. And I need to tell you that he's just not the God that has brought me out but he's also the God that can take me in. He's not just the God that can take me out of a horrible situation or take me out of the world. But he's also the God that can take me in a fight. That'll go with me in a battle. That'll go in, with me in a trial, in a storm. He's also the God that will take me in it. But he'll get me through it. Hallelujah. He's not just the God apostle of our salvation but he's also the God that can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or we can think is there anyone out there today that we're talking to that you can look with your eyes of faith and tell me that and you can tell me today that you are closer than you think I need to tell you today that you are closer than you think. You're closer than you think you are. Don't let the devil tell you that it's overwhelming, that you can't do it, that you don't have the energy, because God in his mighty hand of power is giving you the strength today to continue in the fight. In the comment section, I want you to, to write, I'm close, I'm close, I'm close, Pastor Angie. I can feel it. We're right there on it. We're right there on the breakthrough. I can see it. I can feel it. And I'm going to go get it. Hallelujah. I want you right now to speak to that demon that's in your mind, in your home, and tell that demon I'm close as the praise team comes today. I want you to get a picture of it in your mind, whatever it is today. And I want you to shout, I'm close. I'm close. I'm close, devil. You're not going to have my breakthrough. You're not going to have my victory. You're not going to have my home. I'm close. I'm close. Come on, don't give up now. Don't quit now. Don't walk away now. You have more than where you can have more than where you're at right now. Don't settle. Don't settle. Don't settle. And I'm going to end with this. The Bible says that when David... David went through this battle. In one of the verses of Scripture, I think it's verse 8, the Bible says that David, right in all this Scripture, and I didn't read verse, no, it's verse 7, I believe. I didn't read that verse, but, but in this verse of Scripture, it says that David took the ephod. When he began to inquire of the Lord, 
and, and, and asked God. He, he took the ephod. And he, when he took the, the ephod, apostle, was a vesture that the priest wore yes. to commune with God. Yes, it represented praise. It, the priest wore that vesture when they went in to begin to commune with God. And so David takes the ephod and he is so broken, apostle. He's so broken by what the enemy has taken. He don't know how to get it back. He's never fought this battle before. Right. He's never been. He don't, he don't have the, the steps of doing it. He don't know how to do this. You ever been there when you didn't know how to do it? You didn't know what step to take next? So David, he takes the ephod and he's so broken. And he's so weary. And David, he's so spent. But he still takes the ephod and he asks God, he puts all on that ephod because it's a symbol of communing with God and communing in prayer with God. And he begins to ask God. He said, God, I don't even have a, hardly have the strength for this fight. But he says, God, but I know if you tell me to go, if, if you tell me to go out to this battle, I know that I'm going to win. Hallelujah. And so he, he, he takes that ephod and he begins to pray and ask God. He says, God, should I go? God, are we going to get it? God, where do I go now? God, are we going to get the increase? God, are we going to make it? And have you ever been to a place where you said, I don't even know if I want to fight this or not. That's how David was. He's like, God. I don't even know if I want to fight this or not anymore. But David, put on the ephod and one more time. One more time, he began to go and inquire to the Lord his God. Hallelujah. He said, he said, God, do you want me to fight this? When it looked like that there was no change. When it looked like there was no improvement. When it looks like, God, I can't handle this anymore. When it looks like, God, I can't do this anymore. But this is what happened, Apostle. And you did jump ahead just a little bit. But we flowed with it because God was speaking. And God is speaking right now. And he wants us to remember what Apostle said a few moments ago. In 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 19. This is what God said after David began to inquire of God and get his strength back, God, and be God, God began to impart into him. It says, and there was nothing lacking to them because God told them, he said, go pursue and you will win. Go pursue it one more time. Go, go after it one more time. Go pray again. Go fast again. Put your faith out there again. Keep believing again. Keep enduring again. Keep persevering again. And he said when David pursued, there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters. Here's the victory. Neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. For David recovered all. Oh, friend, oh, family of God, oh, people of God, oh, beloved ones, if you don't quit, you'll recover all. And God said in, in the NIV, it reads like, like this, nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else they had taken. For David brought everything back. And I'm here to tell you today that God is wanting to equip you with strength for the breakthrough. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't let the devil hand you a plate of, it's not for you. It's not going to happen. God don't want you to have it. The devil is a liar. Don't let him steal from you your strength, your victory, your vigor. Don't let him talk you out of your blessing because you are so close, oh child of God. 
You are so close. Hear the word of the Lord today. And thank you for everybody. See, my God, nothing lacking, Lydia. Nothing lacking in Jesus' name. Amen. Alyssa, I receive this word in your heart today, Alyssa. In that great Lydia, I shall recover all in Jesus' name. Henry, victory in Jesus. Mark, shouting out amen. Mark Burt, shout, shouting out amen. Tina saying, don't, don't give up till re, you recover all that's been lost and stole from you by the enemy. Hallelujah. Alessa, yes, Lord, equip me with strength. And we've got prayer requests right now. We're fixing to pray over them. Tina wants prayer for our family that Jesus would guide them in an unending faith and heal their bodies. Also for her grandma in, in the Eden home, uh, two people that got tested positive for covid and Miss Janie praying for strength and wisdom and, and for God to continue to speak to David in April. A praise report gave her life totally back to Jesus. No more fighting God's will. No more. April, we celebrate with you, baby. We're fighting with you, baby. You're not in this alone, honey. Thank you for that. Thank you for that encouragement. Keep on keeping on. Don't let the devil drag you back. Don't let the devil set, cause you to settle. Tina, please pray for the first responders and the essential workers, and we're going to do that. Maribel, bodily healing for, for uh, uh, Sammy in, in her home. Yes, amen, amen, amen. If that's all a prayer request, we're going to begin to pray. Apostle, would you please pray, and then, and then we're going to sing, and we're going to begin to rejoice, and we're going to seal this with praise and thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful first of all, for your word here today. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God, that for the last three Sundays we have been talking, dissecting yes, yes, yes. about breakthrough. Yes, yes, yes. And Lord God, we pray that those that have been listening, taking notes, thank you, Jesus. that they will be a doer of that word. Yes, Lord. Now, God, your word says, call unto me and I will answer you. And show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. And Lord God, you also said, ask and you shall receive. The Lord, the reason that I have quoted your word, we have prayer requests. We have people that are in need to see your strong, mighty right arm move upon their behalf. But first of all, we celebrate April's victory. Yes, Lord. Thank you. We celebrate that overcoming Thank power. You, Thank you for triumph. We celebrate for Thank her you, breakthrough. Jesus. Yes. Thank you, and Jesus. we ask God that you would help her to continue more. to stand strong. More God. More God. Continue more God. to move forward to more you. Honor, now, Lord, more these other you. prayer requests. You, God. Lord God, we give them to you. Yes. God, we are standing yes. upon that word that is forever yes. settled in God. heaven. Show your Heal. strong, mighty right Heal. arm Heal. in God. every one of these Heal. prayer requests. Let Heal. them see, let them see firsthand yes, your miracle working power. Yes, we pray, God, for our first Today. responders Strength. that God, Wisdom. when everybody is running out, they are running in. Thank you for that, God. Those first responders, the nurses and doctors that have been on the front lines you, of this COVID virus. God, Lord God, keep them renew, safe. Renew, keep renew. them from this virus. Yes, God. Bless their families, yes, God. Lord. Lord God, our officers, our fire department, yes, Lord. protect them. Watch over them. God, we, I ask that you would provide for their families, that as they watch over our families, yes, watch Lord. over their families, God. Oh, God. Let there be breakthrough in every one of these prayer requests. Yes, Let there Lord. be breakthrough. Yes, Let there be healing. Yes, yes. Let there be miracles. Yes. Let there be signs and wonders. And God, we thank, thank you for you, it. Lord. We release it now yes, Lord. in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus name. And we seal it. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. I want to tell you today that your strength must be recovered. According to the word of God, that David went in. And he recovered everything. He recovered his strength. Yes. And your strength must be recovered. And that's what's fixing to happen right now. The Bible says, Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. 
Say to them that are a fearful heart, be strong and fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. And he will come and save you. And right now I speak strength as they begin to sing. Go ahead. I speak strength. Go in and get your strength. Let them sing over you. Get your strength right now. My help cometh from the Lord, yes. the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said he would not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth thee, he will not slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy stay upon thy right hand, upon thy right hand. For the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. He shall preserve thy soul even forevermore oh come on cry out cry out the Lord and tell him my help my help my help all of my help cometh from the Lord oh my The Lord is oh, thy shade, shade upon thy right hand, oh, upon thy right hand. For the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. For he shall preserve thy soul, even forevermore. strength back right now who is worthy to be praised i will call on the name of the lord who is worthy to be praised i will call on the name of the lord who is worthy to be praised i will call on the name of the lord who is worthy to be praised. i will i will I will call on the name of the Lord in the times of trouble. He is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. The Lord is my pillar and my fortress, my deliverer, yeah, 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 yeah. my God, my rock. Hey, the Lord is my pillar and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge. He is my shield. And the heart of on, my salvation, he my is my shield. You are. And the heart of my salvation, oh, he oh. is my shield. Oh. And the heart of my salvation, he's my high tower. He's my high tower. 
I will call on the name of the Lord, Come on. who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. I will, I will call on the name of the Lord, he is worthy in every season. Who is worthy to be praised, yes he is. And I will call on the name of the Lord, yes. I will, yes, I will. Who is worthy to be praised? He is worthy. I will call on the name of the Lord of Jesus. Yes, he is is worthy worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? I will, I will, I I will call call on the name of the Lord. I will call on him in the time of trouble. I will call on him in the rain. I will call on the name of the Lord. To the going down of the sun, on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. He's too worthy to be praised. I will call. I will call. I will call. I will call. Before I see the breakthrough, I will call. Before I see my victory, I will call. Before I hear, I will call. He is worthy to be praised. I will call on you. I will call on the name of the Lord. He's got the he is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? I will call on the name of the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? For a few minutes, for a few minutes, go in, go in, go into the spirit. Go in, go in, and get your soul strength. Go in, go in, go in. Go in, go in. Go in, go in. You're covered, you're covered. Go in, you're covered. Go in, go in, go in. to be praised. Every day I will call on the name of the Lord for this new battle. Who is worthy to be praised? For my breakthrough I will call on the name of the Lord. I'm not afraid. Who is worthy to be praised? I'm not afraid to call on the name of the Lord. 
he will answer. Who is worthy to be praised? Surely he will come. I will call through. on the name of I the will Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? Hey, I, I will, will call, call on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. For my direction, I will call on the name of. I will call on my healing. I will call on the name. I will call on the name for of the Lord. For my breakthrough, I will call on the name. I will call on the name of the Lord. Every season, I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. Receive your strength. I will call on the name of the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I want to leave Jesus. you with this here this morning. You are closer than you think. Amen. Don't let discouragement defeat you. Don't let what you see Take your heart, take your mind, because you're closer than you think. Until next time, new beginnings. And everybody that's been watching us, until next time, like us on not just this post, but like us on our Facebook page so that you can get new notifications. Things are changing and things are evolving so we can update you on the, the latest and the most current of news in the house. Amen. God bless you. Keep your knees bent. Keep your head up. God richly bless you. To Wednesday night, keys to successful li living. Join Apostle right here at New Beginnings online. Join us. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. You got the victory. Hallelujah. You got the victory and you're closer than you think. God bless you in Jesus' name.